Would you agree that you should be careful what you wish for, Cancer? I say that because, you know, being the zodiac sign of family, love, all those nurturing qualities, you have a huge convergence of energy here in your fourth house, which is the natural sign, or the natural house of Cancer. I'm Didici, by the way, from astrology.com.au. Welcome to those of you that are new. I'm taking a look here at this fascinating conjunction of planets here in the fourth house and your ruler, the moon, there on the 3rd of October, making a very powerful and beneficial conjunction with Jupiter in your sixth house. Whatever health troubles you've had may start to pass as a result of that. You may have some medical procedures or medical or dietary or routine issues to deal with around the 4th and 5th <coughs> as the moon transits through this area. Notice also around the same time this strong <coughs> and beneficial transit of active Mars into your 4th house. <coughs> Pardon me. There's a dynamic quality here. Also children may play uh, a part in this this month with Mercury moving to your fifth house just a little bit earlier than the eighth there, sixth or seventh. That's the communication planet bringing all of its energies there along with, with uh, Venus there into this fifth house. Mind you, fifth house is also creative. So you're dealing with these fiery and pushy sorts of planets in this fourth house of the horoscope. And that's also significant because if you keep your eye on your ruler here, <clears throat> an idealistic conjunction with this grand trine around the 10th, bringing with it a whole lot of ideas, philo philosophy, educational, maybe even legal for some of you, but I don't see that being a problem as these are generally quite favourable. There could be some work issues there, but the full moon here I think is telling. The full moon here shows us where Predominantly, a lot of your focus is going to be this month as well. So your family affairs are counterbalanced by this full moon there in the 10th house, around the 13th and 14th. And some sudden surprises for you around the 15th. There it is as the moon makes its way into that conjunction with Uranus. Now Uranus, we've talked about, has been, for some of you anyhow, playing havoc in your social affairs and maybe even causing some concerns over what it is you're trying to achieve in life. So you have to get that stabilized. The more low key 12th house transit takes place as the moon moves into this Gemini star sign around the 12th. And that gives you a time to collect your energies <coughs> and to be a little more uh, inward in terms of the way you approach the affairs and uh, of your life and the problems that may be ensuing. A far better period here, we call this domicile when the moon is transiting its own sign here, which is your sun sign, throughout October 20 and 21. Bit of a worry there, and that may have to do more with the way you perceive yourself or project on to how others perceive you. You mustn't worry about that. You can do something a little daring here with the square of moon to Uranus. Just don't blow all your money because this second house has to do with finance and income. So there may be some changes or problems. They're also shown here by the favorable influence of the moon to Jupiter in the sixth house. Sixth house, according to the Western astrologers, has to do with debts, um, disease, and enemies. Certainly having the favorable planet there in the sixth house is not altogether good. But for you, Jupiter functions quite well in this area. It just means you're overworking to a large extent, which is why maybe you need to put a little bit of time into these creative activities. And I mentioned earlier children or younger people, which is the role of the moon. Notice here the conjunction of the moon to Mars. A few little family issues or issues you may have there around the 26th and 27th. And this leads us into the new moon that takes place in your fifth house. 
So this really is a whole new kettle of fish in terms of the way you're approaching your self-expression, making time for that, really reconnecting with your children if you're a parent. All of these sorts of things are highly focused. You can see how the planetary weight has shifted to this fifth house from the fourth. You still have the most favorable planet in your horoscope, Mars, there in the fourth house. That's very constructive, very intense, very strong initiative indicated by this. Challenges as well, though, around the end of the month as we see the right angle there to Saturn in the seventh house. And the seventh house ruler, Saturn, has everything to do with your spouse or your partner, business associates. And the Mars there can be what I call a classic case of passive aggression. So the question is, at the last day of the month, are you going to use this energy here, Cancer, which is this frustrating passive aggression, or this Moon-Jupiter combination, which tells us more about the generosity within your heart and your ability to overcome some of those frustrations through a more spiritual and level-headed approach. Take a look at what we have for you there at astrology.com.au. We've got more monthly readings for all of you, daily readings, yearly readings. I'm working on the 2020 ones right now. Some of you can go in there and uh, even up to Canton now I've finished if you'd like to get a little bit of a sneak preview as to what's going on for the, uh, the year that's about to uh, come over the horizon 2020. Drop me a line, subscribe and by all means uh, take the plunge and have a personal reading. Fear not, I will uh, deliver the truth in a soft and compassionate way. Take care and until next month, take care. Bye bye.